Some scientists believe that we are living in a simulation and everything we are experiencing is coded already. It's not a reality. In 2003, scientist Nick Bostrom published an argument in his paper. And he proposed three possibilities in it. Number one, we might not be able to make computers that can think and feel like humans do before something bad happens and humans are no longer around. That's not a very nice idea. Number two, we could create reality simulations, but for some reason, we never actually do it. This seems unlikely because throughout history, humans have always used technology whenever possible. Number three, in the future, we will create simulations of reality, so we should think about the chance that we are already living in a simulation ourselves. In simpler terms, Bostrom suggests that if advanced civilizations can create highly realistic simulations of their ancestors or alternate realities, and if they have an interest in doing so, then it's statistically likely that we are living in such a simulation rather than its base reality. In a podcast with Joe Rogan, Elon Musk also shared his thoughts on the possibility of a multiverse or simulation. Neil deGrasse Tyson also admitted that the idea is better than 50-50 odds. Stephen Hawking also believed in deterministic physics until quantum mechanics showed that things aren't always predictable. This is not a philosophical hypothesis like Paluto and others' philosophical ideas. It's a practical goal of many computer scientists. To understand this, we can see back in 1972, the most advanced simulation we had for a real game would seem very basic compared to today's standards. Like a simple representation of table tennis, today, computer games look way more realistic with a higher level of computer graphics, and it's going to be better and better until we no longer can differentiate between games and reality. The idea of this simulation reality was popularized by the Matrix films from 1999 to 2003. This discussion is again hyped nowadays, and a great name in the tech world, Elon Musk said that the possibility of us being into base reality is one in a billion. As he has authority, and while seeing the advancements in the gaming world, we can believe this because we probably will simulate the reality one day. But if we could stimulate a reality, why we would stop at one? Obviously, we will stimulate a billion. But are we living in a simulation and not a reality? If yes, then what about our accomplishments? Of course, they don't matter at all. Even nothing matters what we do or have. Or is this reality hard to accept that we are in a simulation and all these natural laws and everything that is happening is just a piece of information? Maybe ones or zeros. If this is the case, then there are two disturbing possibilities. First, if we are simulated, then maybe everything we feel and go through is just information. Like your age, your memories, all of these, and you may have been born just a few seconds ago. The people who love you are just acting according to this information, and in reality, they just just don't love you. The second possibility is that if you are simulated, then no one you ever met, and there were some NPCs populating the program with Simularca emulating intelligent conversations. Rene Descartes said, Cogito ergo sum, which means I think, therefore I am, which shows the certainty of one's own existence based on the act of thinking. Now, if we think Elon Musk's one in a billion possibilities is the case, then some points don't make sense at all. The game doesn't show everything all the time, just what you see. When we look closely at something with a microscope, the game makers only create the detailed stuff when we're looking closely at something with a microscope. Like at the tiny parts, this could mean that if simulations are possible, they could create their own simulations, like a bunch of worlds within worlds. This would mean that the first two ideas from Bostrom's theory are probably not true. It's possible to create thinking beings in simulations, and sometimes civilizations choose to do that. But then there's a problem. If there are lots of levels of simulation, which ones would decide to fix the contradiction? The lower level simulations might not be able to create super advanced simulations with thinking beings, but they still might think it's possible since they're working on that technology. So there might not actually be a problem here. Another idea from William Poundstone's recent book, The Doomsday Calculation, is that if a civilization is super advanced and lasts for thousands of years, making simulations would would be normal for them, just like using smartphones is for us. They might even make simulations of times before advanced technology to keep things from getting too complicated. But trying to guess what these advanced civilizations would do is like guessing what aliens would do. It's hard to know for sure because we don't have that much data on it. 
Let's break down how we might reach the billion to one odds. Elon Musk believes that simulations will eventually be able to perfectly copy reality and brains, which is the third idea of Bostrom. Imagine this circle represents where the right idea is. Musk's idea is that we will definitely one day be able to make conscious beings on a computer. It's tricky because it's not immediately obvious that this is a prediction, but that's what this calculation is based on. There's another way to think about this called Bayesianism. It's like frequentist thinking, but lets us figure out the chance of having that data if each idea is 100% true. That means the odds between the two ideas are 50-50, even chances. So simply put, we might think there's a 50-50 chance we're in a simulation. But there's more to it. Just comparing these two ideas doesn't tell us the probability of living in the real world. In the simulation idea, that probability is always higher than 50%, so it's more likely this is real. One assumption here is called the principle of indifference where we assume both ideas are equally likely before we know anything else. Imagine trying to guess between Pepsi and Cola with no other info. Now, we know that we haven't created our own simulations yet. This is what Sean Carroll talked about in his Contradiction Argument and Neil's Star Talk show. What, um, these are ideas. Is there any way to experimentally verify any of this? Well, we're trying, but the short answer is we don't know yet. We don't have... Uh... It's not like a no. Just say it. <laughs> no? It's very much not a no. Oh, okay. But all the words, Neil. These are all the words. A reality without its own simulations is called nolly. This goes against what William Poundstone said earlier. But when we run the numbers again, we still end up with the same answer. We're probably in the real world. The twist is that for the example values I gave, most simulations are bad. So the few that are good are at a higher level. But for yet, we have two historical objections to this hypothesis. The first one of John Searle by his 1980s Chinese room argument. To understand this, imagine you're sitting inside a room. You don't understand Chinese, but you have a book of rules that tells you how to respond to Chinese characters with other Chinese characters. Someone outside the room slides a piece of paper under the door with Chinese writing on it. You find the corresponding characters in your rule book, copy down the response it tells you to give, and slide the paper back out. To the person outside, it appears as though you understand Chinese because you're providing the correct responses, even though you're just following instructions. This idea shows no matter how advanced technology can get, there will always be a clear difference between human consciousness and machine operations. Searle isn't necessarily arguing against AI or its usefulness. Rather, he's highlighting a philosophical boundary between simulating human-like intelligence and replicating the inner experience of understanding our consciousness. Another one is the knowledge argument, which was brought up by Frank Jackson in 1982. To understand this, there is a girl, Mary, who learned everything about color in books and paper, but always lived in a black and white room. One day, she stepped out into the real world and saw a red apple. Now, did she learn something new about this color, or did she already know about this from her knowledge? This idea shows that the things we see, the smell we sniff, and the way we feel, which are called qualia, are possible by physical experience, not just by coded information. However, some non-conformists believe that qualia doesn't exist at all. So according to this rejection of qualia, we are doing things mindlessly without any feeling or urge like eating, talking, reproducing, listening to music, everything. Now, I think it's clear that the idea of simulating a world like ours isn't easy and is probably impossible. But what's the whole point of this idea then? Here, we can say it's a religious theory instead of a scientific idea. We as a part of different religions like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others have some beliefs in the after-death world to deny that death is the end because if death is the end, then it's the saddest end ever. I'm not here to forcefully turn down the three possibilities of Bostrom's idea, but these points are clearly making holes in it. It's not logical and rational and doesn't lie in the scientific pillars. So it's mostly based on faith equivalent to God. Now, this hypothesis doesn't have any scientific base, and some authorities are mixing philosophical, religious, and scientific theories together, without any clear evidence to make it hyped and popular among people. This is strange, and we can say a reason why we're living in reality, not assimilation.